Hey up guys. This is probably good. Created this one as a quick quickie, but I don't know whether this is going to be um, a quick one or what. It's going to be a bit of a two-parter. So we've got our rugby league season going off in the country now at round two stage. So as everyone would know, everything has been a bit delayed because of the um, ongoing um, <laughs> issue that's still ongoing at the moment. So there is that, it, obviously it is delayed by about a month and a half to two months, but it is underway. Uh, our first game back properly in the season was against one of our major rivals, Lee. We didn't get off to the greatest of starts, but we did win that game just at the end. Could have, could have won it a bit more securely um, if the kicking was a little bit on point, but then again, that's there or thereabouts because I haven't seen the exact angles but sometimes I do know that sometimes kicking can be a little bit of a difficulty if you were in the wind or all sorts of other things especially with the angle but then again it is the first get proper game back so a uh, 20 to 18 win against Lee Centurions then the game that just went on a few days ago which took the place of our usual Good Friday game against St. Helens. Now, St. Helens being our major rival, just down the road on the other side. Um, yeah, but this time, instead of having them, because that game has been moved further into the season so that hopefully we can get some fans into the stadium. I will cover that over in a minute. Um, so it, we ended up going up against uh, Wakefield Trinity Wildcats, which... They are, on paper, a good team. They've got some good players and all of that on that. But we absolutely battered them. Again, kind of came up to a slow start. But after that, it was just, we absolutely just annihilated them on the field. Uh, so that was like a 34-6 to win on that one. Now, our next game coming up is going to be against York City. York City Knights. We are away in York for that game. Now they're in the brand new stadium as well, the the uh, LNER community stadium. So they've got some nice new facilities from what I can see of it. I haven't been there yet. One day I will go up there. At some point in the next couple of years I will be trying to travel to as many away games as well as some of the home games. Now we'll cover over a little bit of what I'm hoping to do with some of the home games as well up here. Now, going into the capacities and the crowd and all that, and some of the other reasons why some games have been moved over, is there is a government rule, or at least a safety rule anyway at the moment, which is countrywide for sports in outdoor stadia. Now, I believe if you've got a stadium capacity of 40,000 or more, you can have 10,000-ish in. Someone correct me on that down below, because I think I might have got that one wrong. But anywhere from below 40 you can have up to 25% of the stadium capacity. Now, with the DW being uh, 25,000 and change, so I think it's like 25, 150, maybe 25, 2, something like maybe even close to 25, 3. I'm not exact because I don't know the exact amount on that. Um, but ours looks like we're probably going to be somewhere around the 6,000, and that also looks like no away fans as well. It's going to be just home fans like the spit spot around the periphery of the stadium and all of that lot so with that in mind most of the people that would be there as well are obviously going to be the season ticket holders because they're tip priority i don't have a season ticket yet i was going to get a season ticket this year but as a few things have carried on and also with the mm, issue continuing um i kind of put that off for a little while I also didn't get a new shirt this year. There's a couple of other reasons for that. One, I'm still deaf as a flipping post. So I'm still waiting for that. Hence why you might notice that I am a little bit louder than usual. Because all I can hear of it, it sounds like I'm whispering. So, you know, yeah, this year is okay. But it's still not the best because it is also having its own little whinge. Just because it's having to work overtime. And I do get headaches a lot on that. But that's by the by. Anyway, back on point. So, further in the year, because it's kind of like next week, in a week, most of the country will open up. 
so there's things like that and then i believe it's like a month and or so after that that people can go back into stadiums plus there is going to be test events within football and all sorts of other things going on as well so there is that with it being round three for the challenge cup against york that's going to be quite a challenge now it's the first time for about three maybe four seasons that we've not had warrington now Moving on to the second part of this and the real reason why I built this video in. There is going to be a new rugby league structure set up in North America. Now, those of you who have watched some of my other videos and did know that, there was a team from Canada, Toronto specifically, the Toronto Wolfpack. They are going to be back, in effect, in what is going to be the NARL, the NARL or the North American Rugby League competition. It's going to be a 14 team structure set up, looks like, along the lines of most of the North American things with an East and West Conference. There's going to be 14 teams set up in there, all in all. Now, if I do remember, I will put a quick snapshot of what that picture of the team badges is going to be. But this is going to be, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's there. I don't know a lot about each of these teams, Mostly, obviously, I know a bit more about Toronto because they did play in the British system. They were in there. They were from League One to the Championship to Super League. They did get a part of the season in Super League, and I did see them. And I did not see the star man playing. Um, but, again, he did have reasons because he did have family who his wife was giving birth. So his, uh, his kid was uh, due to be born. So, obviously, yeah. Uh, that does trump anything to do with playing. So that's perfectly fine. Anyway, a quick run rundown of the, the teams. So you've got the Atlanta Rhinos, the Boston 13s, the Brooklyn Kings, Cleveland Rugby League team, New York Rugby League team, the Washington Cavalry. Now, in one of the um, forums that I'm part of, someone has said that it does actually look more like it says Charlie for the Cavalry, but it's actually Cavalry. You've got to be look a little careful because I think it's the uh, style of the writing. It looks a little bit uh, calligraphied in there. That's the East Coast Conference. The West Coast Conference is going to be made up of the Austin Armadillos, the Las Vegas Blackjacks, Portland Loggers. Portland is getting quite a few teams in here. Uh, Portland's got... A lot of teams, if they are where I think they're going to be playing, that's going to be quite a good thing. Don't know, but especially with the Portland Timbers and things like that, it kind of feeds in with some of that. Um, did I say the Phoenix Venom? I said it again if I already did. Uh, you've got the San Diego Swell, uh, San Francisco Rush. Now, there isn't a bit of an addendum on here as well. Toronto Wolfpack, they have played over here. And the Ottawa Aces, they were also scheduled to fit into uh, our system over here as well at some point. Don't know whether it was this year or whether it was next year, but they were supposed to be coming in like League One level uh, ish in there. The Canada Cup is going to be uh, part of those two. Uh, I also believe as well. Um, just hold on a second, no, while I just find this picture. Yeah, so Toronto and Ottawa uh, will be playing the um, Canada Cup uh, this year. And then they will be entered into the East Coast Conference from 2022. Also as well, I'm going to read this bit um, verbatim. So I'm just going to read this word for word. Our new North American professional uh, rugby league competition launches today. This was um, put up a few days ago. I think it was like three or four days ago. Maybe a bit longer because I'm a little bit late to the party on this. Because um, I've had other things going on. Mainly Easter and a few other um, health related medical things and family related things to deal with. So yeah, that launches today called the North American Rugby uh, League or the NARL or NARL. It will, oh, sorry, it's a 14 team, not a 12 team, 14 team. Um, yeah, it will be a 14 team competition that will play the its first round of games the weekend of June the 19th in Brooklyn and June the 20th in Las Vegas. So it's probably going to be the East and West um, kick-up dates. 
Teams from across the United States and Canada will compete in th the three conferences. So obviously um, using the Canadian bit there as the uh, third conference. And then obviously that will then, from what I read a moment ago, also that will then amalgamate and boil down um, into the two conferences. So the East Coast Conference comprising of the Atlanta Rhinos, Boston 13s, Brooklyn Kings, Cle Cleveland Rugby League team, and New York Rugby League team, and the Washington Cavalry. The West Coast Conference made up of the Austin Armadillos, Las Vegas Blackjacks, Phoenix Venom, Portland Loggers, San Diego Swell, San Francisco Rush. Due to the um, ongoing, I'm going to have to it here anyway but the uh the uh, coffee boy 19 regulations a canada cup will be played between toronto wolfpack and uh ottawa aces both teams enter the eastern conference in 2022 all games will be broadcast on the narl's exclusive online streaming partner sports flick in 2021 due to the ongoing coffee boy 19 regs all games will be played at a single venue or festival style that will see all the teams in their respective conference play in one stadium on one day with no fans to keep everyone safe. Speaking ahead of today's launch, the NARL's Chief Operating Officer, Robert Curtis, said, I am delighted to introduce the North American Rugby League uh, to rugby league fans around the world in what we firmly believe is the next big evolutionary step in rugby league. Now, this is something I've always been wondering about as well, because with America being a huge landmass and a massive sporting land base itself, with the NFL, now with the soccer that's going on, with all of the other stuff going in there, you've got all of that motorsports, all of that football, all of that soccer, everything else that just amalgamates into there. Why hasn't rugby grown over there? Because American football or NFL style, even CFL, Canadian football, that is all around the same kind of rules. There is a few differences, like passing forwards, passing back, the tackle style, and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go into all of that because that is going to be for a big breakdown um, video later on in time, especially when I have a little bit more patience with myself. Don't hold me to that, but I might do a big breakdown between some of the differences in the rules and the tackle style and all of that lot later on. But because of the collegiate system in the States, you could easily fit rugby into that. For some of those guys that don't quite make it into football or don't want to run down the football route because they want something else. Or even if you tried it and the kids enjoyed it more, you might find that sometimes it works a little bit easier. But again... I digress. I'm not going to digress. This is just all about this bit. So, now then. Next little bit. I apologise. You're probably just going to see part of my head because I do have to go closer to the screen um, to read this because the page on Twitter that I'm reading it off doesn't exactly give it in good light. So, you know, it is a bit harder to read. the uh, Right, so one of the uh, little pointers on here is the NARL is the culmination of years of research and market testing and it has been designed to bring you the hardest hitting fastest most exciting sport on the planet matches begin this summer it's time to get excited about a new class of contact sport even though i know some of you may want me to say a new class of contact sport i'm not going to deride it i wear the missing tooth with pride northern I don't say glass and grass, I say glass and grass, because that's where I am. <laughs> yes. We will see the NRL as an addition to the existing rugby league structures in the United States. From what I've found, anyway, by quick research, the rugby landscape in the States is there or thereabouts set up. There is leagues. It's not massively major. It's no huge profession. It's like semi-pro or even literally just what you could call like a, a Saturday morning, Sunday league sort of thing. There's no massive major thing there from what I can see. 
There might be, I can't, probably might not be able to find it because I'm not looking hard enough. But from what I've found, there's a lot of small time leagues or high school leagues, college leagues that are going on, but it's not a huge thing. This is the first big step in bringing it out into there to put it up on a pedestal, give it what it deserves. So this is the, the existing league structure in the United States and certain certainly do not see ourselves as a rival or rebel league. Yeah, our sole aim is to grow the fantastic sport of rugby league in North America and create a legacy for generations to come. Further information uh, and media inquiries, please contact info at NA rugby league dot com so they've done most of the work for me i don't really need to do that but you can find them on twitter you can find them on facebook and you can also find them elsewhere there's plenty of little bits and pieces in there now just a little bit of speculation just to throw on the end if this goes for three four five seasons and starts to get good and they've got some good players and some good teams and some of the teams are on a good rumble roll Anyone out there thinks that the World Club Challenge would be a good hot shot to do, let's say, the top two, top three teams from the NRL, the NARL and Super League. Throw them into like a big, like basically bonanza thing to do a big like player, mini player structure. They just put it into a big smash fest. Just go smash, 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 smash. <laughs> Top teams come out, maybe an Australian team drops out, maybe a British team drops out. Maybe you could, in all certainty, for a while, the American teams may not have that calibre of player. Again, it depends on where their wage cap and everything else comes in. Also, whether they can get the talent scouts out there. But with the existing player pool that we've got, there's a lot of players that just drop off. Because they go through the academy systems, they come out, they go into the, the team, they don't exactly always stay in the first team. They then go off to do a few like further down like the championship league one and stuff like that, but they just don't quite make it. Maybe those lads will now get a shot at first team experience, proper and full league. Maybe they'll be able to do that. So there probably is going to be quite a few players who did come through the, the ranks at Wigan, at St. Helens, wherever, at Leeds all of that there's probably going to be a couple of australians over there that might be coming to the end of their careers i don't want to ever say that but you never know because they might just go well i've got a chance to do two two more seasons left what do i want to do do i want to stay out in australia do i want to go to britain or do i want to go to america it's one of those things it just adds another thing to the landscape now Looks promising. From what I've seen, I've only really seen a couple of the little bits and pieces on there for that. As for the badges, the badges do look quite um, entertaining and quite cool. Everyone should know the Toronto Wolfpack badge by now because that was one that was there. The Ottawa Aces, theirs was put out a while ago as well. Um, first time I saw that, I just thought, who's pulled up an Oilers shirt? Because um, if anyone knows anything about NFL, you'll probably remember. Um, anything to do with the oil is there uh, the Atlanta Rhinos one that's quite cool a little bit Leeds mirrored um, there the Armadillos does look quite good Boston now the Boston one kind of reminds me a little bit of the Boston Celtics but then again that's just because of its basic forming a lot of them do look quite cool uh, the New York League one's pretty good the Phoenix Venom that's quite a cool one Portland Loggers looks looks like a fire department shield but having the the having that san francisco obviously the golden gate bridge is the main thing for them brooklyn kings again brooklyn bridge yeah not wrong with that and the blackjacks vegas come on you had to the cavalry mm, nice of the black stallion there San Diego Swell, Surfers Paradise, bro. Does look cool, does look cool. Cleveland, sorry to say, the guitar picks shape that 
almost like a radio station banner. But this is mine. Anyway, put your ideas, put your thoughts, smack it all down below. If you liked it, smack that like. If you didn't like it, smack that dislike. It all helps in the end. If you want to contribute to anything, stick your comments down below. And always, don't forget, if you see that big red button on your screen, turn it from red to grey, because that will help us all out. Anyway, that is me. Peace.